lathe polishing tool. This tool will eliminate the risk associated with polishing and sanding on the lathe. At this point in time, you're probably wondering, how does this tool eliminate the risk associated with polishing and sanding? It eliminates the need for the operator to hold on to the sandpaper or polishing medium. You may also be thinking to yourself, well, I don't need this. All I have to do is let go of the sandpaper and everything will be fine if it gets caught. Well, unfortunately, you cannot actually physically let go fast enough before it will pull your hand into the lathe. Some of the bonuses of using this tool will give you a more consistent finish and also eliminate operator fatigue from bending over long periods of time. Okay, let's see this tool in action. First, we'll start with the setup and center. To center the polishing tool, we will leave it loose inside of the tool holder, raise up the micrometer stop, push it forward until both pads are touching, tighten the polishing tool into the holder, and now the polishing tool is centered and secured. To secure the sandpaper or polishing medium, all we need to do is loosen both top and bottom clamping knobs, fit the sandpaper to the proper length, secure one end, loop around, and tighten both clamping knobs. Here's a demonstration of the pull sanding setup. Here's a demonstration of the two-point push sanding setup. Here is a demonstration of the two-point polishing setup. The polishing medium is held in place by the abrasion friction of the sandpaper. Here is a demonstration of the pull polishing method. The design. There's also links to the STL files in the description. Okay, the design on this is relatively simple. Basically, it's a 2D extrusion. What I did is I turned around and created a V pattern here, something that we could be used for pushing or pulling the paper. Um, we put a channel in here. This is probably the most important part here, is where the, it actually locks and grabs on both sides of the paper. If we rotate this around here, uh, because this is only a one inch by one inch, and I have a hole here for the tool to be uh, held up on something, so you put a nail in the wall, you slide it on there. Uh, an improvement on a design would probably be a small pocket in here, which I would lay a piece of metal down so that the screws for holding this into the tool holder doesn't actually uh, collapse into here because it's a honeycomb. I also turned around and did a left and right. When you see the photo of the, uh, of the part, you can tell that the knobs on the left and on the right so a, screw, a nut would go into here and then the bolt would fit through and in this case a nut would be on the bottom and the bolt would fit through here so that you can tighten both sides down and what that'll do is it'll compress this piece here that's why that circles here is to allow this piece to compress and grab onto the sandpaper now this is a double design so you can have it on the inside here the sandpaper facing outward so that you can push polish and if you look on the finished product there's a piece of rubber and a piece of rubber here that is to insulate so that this doesn't get hot and melt. You have to keep that in mind with this too. This is plastic and it's a thin honeycomb web. Uh, it will melt relatively easily. And you can also turn around and loop it around your part so that the sandpaper is on the inside and you're pulling this back and away. So therefore it polishes on the back side of your round piece that you're polishing. 
And that's basically it for the design intent on this. It was very simple. It was a 2D extrude. Pretty simple stuff. The design of the knob. I love making my own knobs from screws. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do on the 3D printer because they're actually relatively strong. And with the different designs, you can get different grips and feels. So that's kind of awesome. I decided to go with a three fingered one in this case. Uh, this is a quarter 20. So a quarter 20 bolt goes through. It was the exact standoff that I needed. And I decided to change up the plug type this time. This time, the height from here to here will be the exact height difference from the plug so therefore when I put the bolt in a little bit of glue around here this guy will slide down and we should be good to go so that's what this knob looks like I always put I shouldn't say always because I didn't in the beginning I used to leave these guys sharp and I would use smaller radiuses and what would happen is after gripping or trying to uh, tighten and loosen multiple times it would leave your finger feeling raw so now I use nice smooth curves and it's really nice has a good texture to it and that's basically the design of the knob building and assembly if you decide to build one please send me a message in the comment section and let everybody know how it went this is our latest model that we're going to show yes on the platform we're going to position this guy on in the center we're going to choose which nozzle, in our case it's going to be the left. This guy is basically ready to print, no supports. There we go. That's what this guy is going to print, so let's take a look. Okay, we'll zoom in a little bit here. So we're at the top layer, and as we go down, it reveals our honeycomb on the inside. down to our first layer and that's basically it this new and improved version has chamfered edges here and here for loading also has another expansion chamber here for compression and it works pretty good and it also has the uh, pocket here for the metal insert so our knob and cap comes in backwards or upside down. So we need to flip this guy around. Make sure that we're on top of the table. So we'll go on platform center. It's blue on the bottom. We're touching the bottom of our table. And we want to use our left extruder. And then we'll print. That'll come out just like this. We we'll drop our layers down. Let's we'll zoom in a little here. Go layer by layer. Our knob is hollow. You can see the hex where the bolt head fits in. These knobs are extremely strong for being extremely light. Very strong. And that's what it'll print just like that. Boom. Upgrade and the final part. Okay, here is the final product. It looks great. Um, I made three main improvements. One, I made this longer to accommodate a longer metal insert. This is so that the screws don't compress or pinch through the plastic. This is actually quite weak. I've also increased the chamfer size here so that it's easier to feed the sandpaper inside. And I put this extra notch in here so that this compresses easier and holds onto the sandpaper better. Uh, overall, I would give this probably a rating of 10 out of 10. I really like it. It feels good and it works very well. I know some of you guys are saying, why would you make this out of plastic? Well, 
The thing is, if this is made out of plastic and it has the weak honeycomb center, if you run into something, it's going to break relatively easy. And the nice thing about this is, all of this material can be recycled. So let's say I broke this tool, this piece of metal will pop out, put it in the next piece, the nut, the bolts, the knobs, everything can come off, and even the rubber will peel off, and I can use it on my next part. I'm glad that you enjoyed this video. If you want to see other great videos, check out my YouTube channel, Shop and Math. If you got any value out of this video, please like and subscribe. It's free, and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face, and I'll do the rest. Thanks for watching the video, and have a great night.